All right, let's talk some comic books. I got a whole bunch that I'm going to go through and talk about. Uh, Robin, Spider-Man, X-Force, uh, Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, number four, four, five, yep. And Venom and Batman 91, which they are pumping Batman out. 90? Didn't I just go over 90 last week? Didn't I? I'm not sure. Uh, after this, I got some Star Wars comics, and then I still got to get the Thor. And then I got some indie books to uh, do reviews on and stuff like that. So I want to go over these. First one I want to talk about is this, because this is the big one. I didn't even know this was coming out. I didn't see any advertising for it until I saw... I don't know what I came across, but this was really good. So here's the difference between Marvel and DC. So Marvel does a lot of cash grabbing. A lot of cash grabbing all of the time. And usually the product is not worth it. Now, this is in a lot of ways a cash grab. It's Robin's 80th anniversary. It's fine. But how many characters have long, like, you know, multi-year anniversary. You could do that with a lot of characters, like 60th anniversary, 70th anniversary. I see this book as a test. So some of the biggest books for DC over the past two years were the Superman 1000 and the Detective Comics 1000. They made a lot of money off those books. And they were really good. They brought in a lot of, a lot of artists and a lot of different names to write, a lot of big names to come in and do work on it. And what they did is exactly what they did in this book. So you can see here, you have a lot of different stories from different time periods of Robin's book. This is essentially a Robin 1000. That's what this is. So what this book, to, what this book tells me, and this is what I think that they want to do, and it's actually smart if they do it, is they want to be able to take other characters and what they'll do is do a book just like this. They'll do a book just like this, like an anniversary book. They'll bring in a bunch of different artists and writers and colorists, and they'll do short stories exactly like this. Cause that's what this book is. This book is a, a bunch of different stories of every Robin. So you've got Tim Drake, you've got Damian Wayne, you've got, Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, and then Stephanie Brown has also got a story in here, which I found surprising because she wasn't even Robin that long. I don't remember how long, but it, it wasn't long. It was not long at all. <laughs> she went back to being spoiler almost immediately, but she's in there, and I think that that was just to throw a lady in there. You know how it is. Uh, the story was still good, though. I actually enjoyed it. So this was, it was really good. Now, if they do this a lot, I would be on board with this. Plus, I've always liked Robin. Robin was like, uh, Robin, like ch the Chuck Dixon Robin miniseries books, Robin 1, 2, and 3. Those, like Robin 2, that was like the some of the first comic books I ever bought. And uh, that, I always enjoyed his run on Nightwing and everything. I always liked those characters. They actually brought him back to do a story, which I was surprised to see. Uh, there it is right there, Dick Grayson, Nightwing in Aftershocks, you know. So look at the talent. You can see all the people that they brought in to do the work here. And you have several stories like this one's, uh, they've retconned once again, Robin leaving Batman, <laughs> which is essentially what this is. Uh, him like going off to become Nightwing. And then there's a story after that, which was really cool. Uh, not this one, but... But so night, of course, Dick Grayson gets the most stories. But look at this one. This is like, listen, doesn't, doesn't that look just like 90s art? That's Dick Grayson with the Titans. And then we also get a Grayson story, which was a short lived story. I didn't really read Grayson, so I kind of breezed through that one. Then we get a Jason Todd one, which was really good and heartfelt. Uh, we get one with all of the Robins, like Tim Drake has two. Jason Todd only had like one story. Then we have one of all the, all the Robins hanging out and talking. Damian Wayne gets one. Stephanie Browns only gets like one story. And then there's a Super Sons little story, a comic that really was short-lived and I think really could have gone somewhere. Super Sons was a really fantastic book. They got canceled because of Brian Michael Bendis. Never forget that. Brian Michael Bendis came over to 
DC Comics and ruined it. So I really enjoyed this. I liked it a lot. I really do like these books and I hope they do more of them. I really do. I wish we could have a, a Tim Drake Robin series again. I don't know if they'll ever bring that back. I kind of think this might be a test. Like maybe a test for that. We'll see. But I did enjoy it. It's, yeah, 10 bucks, But, I mean, it's essentially like a 48, 58-page book or whatever. It's good. I liked it a lot. And then we have Batman continuing that storyline. Joker kind of gearing up. This whole thing with the designer. Uh, still enjoying this run way, way better <laughs> now that Tom King's gone. So if you're into Batman, I still think this is a solid book. Venom Island. Uh, this is still fantastic. Really good. Way better. Probably one of the best books at Marvel. Uh, in fact, I would say this is probably one of the best books on shelves. It's really good. It keeps being good. They're doing this, you know, it's the story he's been telling for 25 issues and that little event he had. So, I mean, I, I can't say much more other than that this is a solid book. It continues to be solid. And we have... Power Rangers Ninja Turtles, which you think would be terrible, but it's done by Boom Studios. And you know, if you guys have been watching my comic book talks, I always praise the Power Rangers books over at Boom Studios because they're really good. They're really good. I'm telling you, some of the best stuff on the shelves. And this this was this is surprisingly still really good. It's got the storyline and it works. Uh, the regular Power Rangers can't use their coins, so they had this idea to give them. To the Ninja Turtles, Shredder is using the green power coin. So, like, I don't know. It's it's fun. I have fun reading it. Uh, like April O'Neil using the pink power coin. It's an interesting idea. It's almost like an inversion because, see, then the Power Rangers are now using <laughs> the Ninja Turtles methods and they drive around in the van. And at the end of the issue, it's not really much spoilers. Like, you're going to have, like, Bebop and Rocksteady are grown, like, because Rita Repulsa turns them into giants. So now you have the turtles, <laughs> you've seen the Megazord. It's, it's way better than I thought it would be, and I really enjoyed it. If you like the Power Rangers books, it's solid. Then you have X-Force, which is still pretty good. This issue sucked, though. This was the weakest X-Force I've read because nothing happens. It's really just them gearing up to go do something. It's the weakest X-Force that I've read yet. You could skip it. It's still all right. It's it's the it's the second best X-Men book right now by far. I still think Marauders is much better. I enjoy each individual ep like book of Marauders. Each issue I've thoroughly enjoyed and liked. Uh, this book was really a downer. You could skip it, you know, if you don't feel like buying it. Uh, the pace for the trade style hurts this book. Like, I'm sure it would read better in a trade paperback. But this one, I just didn't care for. It's boring. And then another boring book, Amazing Spider-Man, which I would drop. I would drop this book. But they announced at C2E2 that finally they're going to have a big reveal in about four issues. I've been reading this book for 40 issues. I want to see where it goes and that's such a terrible reason to still be invested in this book. But that's where I am. Otley still has his hit or miss art. Like, I don't know what's up with his faces. But when he draws characters in costumes, uh, the art is pretty good. But that's like the only time I enjoy it. When he draws human faces, like outside of masks and suits, like, you know, it's a big difference. And I don't have to go far to show you. Look here and then look here. I don't entirely because Otley is a really good artist. The problem here is the rush job, the rush job that Marvel puts these people through. So that's a big problem. But uh, the the surprise hit, the one that I've liked the most out of everything that I bought in a while, was this. So it's ten bucks. There's a lot to read. You don't need. You don't need to read anything else. You can just read this. And if you like, you know, Robin characters and and so on and so on, I think you'll like this. This was a really fun book. Oh, I'm sorry. It's 100 pages. My bad. Not 40. So this is there's a lot to read here. If I was going to recommend anything mainstream, this is it. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Share the video. Throw a like up. Throw a comment. All of that good stuff. Give me your thoughts. If you read anything, what are you reading? What do you have to recommend? Let me know. I'd like to hear from you guys. That's it.
I'll see you. Thanks for watching. Peace.